Hi everyone. So today I am here with the topic of pulpectomy from pediatric dentistry. So before getting into the video, if you are new to our channel and haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to our channel and also press the bell icon so that you get notified every time we upload a new video. And also follow us on Instagram. So let's start with the definition of pulpectomy. What is pulpectomy? It is nothing but the removal of all pulpal tissue okay that is from the coronal as well as the radicular portions of the tooth this is what you have to remember that it is also the radicular portion of the pulp that is removed this is what mainly distinguishes it from the features of pulpotomy in pulpotomy we used to remove only the coronal portion of the pulp but in pulpectomy the entire pulpal tissue the entire pulpal tissue that is coronal plus radicular is removed this is a definition that is given by Finn. Another definition that was given by Mathewson is it is the complete removal of the necrotic pulp from the root canals of primary teeth and filling them with an inert resorbable material so as to maintain the tooth in the dental arch. Now let's see what is the objective of pulpectomy. It is to promote physiological root resorption and also to hold the space for the erupting permanent tooth. Now let's see what are some of the indications of pulpectomy. In which all cases you can do pulpectomy. The first indication is the patient should be in good general health with no serious disease. Then it should be a tooth which was previously planned for pulpotomy but now it is showing uncontrolled pulpal hemorrhage so you have now decided to do a pulpectomy. Or it can be a tooth where it is pulpless but with stomas or it can be a pulpless primary teeth in case of hemophiliacs where you cannot go for an extraction or it can be a pulpless anterior teeth when speech aesthetics are all a factor you cannot extract the teeth because it's an anterior tooth and if you extract it speech and aesthetics will all be affected so you have to maintain the tooth in the arch then you can go for pulpectomy or a case where the primary teeth with necrotic pulp and minimum of root resorption. Now let's see what is the radiographic indication for doing pulpectomy. The radiographic indication is when there is adequate periodontal and bony support. Now let's see what are the contraindications for pulpectomy. The first contraindication is systemic illness. If the patient is having some kind of congenital ischemic heart disease or leukemia or if the children are on long-term corticosteroid therapy or if there is excessive tooth mobility then it's of no use doing a pulpectomy or in cases where there is an insufficient tooth structure to allow isolation by rubber dam and extracoronal restoration or in the cases where there has been a communication between the roof of the pulp chamber and region of furcation. When there is a furcation involvement, the prognosis tends to be very poor. Now let's see what is the radiographic contraindication for pulpectomy when there is an external root resorption or when there is an internal root resorption, especially the apical third of the root or when there is a radicular cyst or dentigerous or a follicular cyst, then you cannot go for pulpectomy. Now let's see how this is done or what is the procedure of pulpectomy. So to understand it better, we can divide it into two. There is a single visit pulpectomy and there is a multiple visit pulpectomy. So first let's see how is the single visit pulpectomy done. But before getting into the procedure, in which all cases you can do single visit pulpectomy. If there is a large carious exposure with frank involvement of radicular pulp but without any periapical changes, this is the criteria that determines that your tooth can go for single visit pulpectomy. There is no periapical changes which means you can go for single visit pulpectomy. Now let's see how the procedure is done step by step. First as you all know you anesthetize the tooth and isolate it and then an axis cavity is prepared. Then the pulp chamber is de-roofed followed by all the accessible coronal and radicular pulp. Whatever you can get you remove it with the help of broaches and then you irrigate it well with saline. Then you flush out all the debris and the dentin shavings with the help of the irrigating solutions. Then you dry the canals with paper points and then finally you obturate it completely and then place a final restoration and stainless steel crown. Everything is done in a single visit. Now let's see what is 
multiple visit pulpectomy. So which cases you have to go for multiple visit pulpectomy? One, if there is an infection, abscess or a chronic sinus that is there on the tooth or in the cases where the necrotic pulp is affected with the periapical involvement. There is a periapical involvement, then you have to go for multiple visit pulpectomy. So let's see how the procedure is done. So there is a first visit, second visit and third visit. So in the first appointment, what we do is you do the axis opening. So you anesthetize the tooth again and you isolate it and then the axis cavity is prepared. Then the pulp chamber is completely de-roofed and all the accessible coronal and radicular pulp tissue is removed with the help of brooches. And then you place a formocresol cotton pellet and then do a temporary restoration and then you leave the patient. Then you have to call the patient for a second appointment where you do the cleaning and shaping, basically your BMP, that is your biomechanical preparation. So you call the patient 5 to 7 days after the first appointment, okay, that's roughly around 1 week after the first appointment. You remove the temporary restoration and then you file the canals, you progressively increase the file diameter and all that and you complete the regular BMP or your biomechanical preparation. You determine the working length and then you irrigate the canals well. And the indication of a complete BMP is when you have the smooth canals that have same shape as your external walls. And then you irrigate and debride the canals, dry the canals well and then you place a temporary filling after placing a sterile cotton pellet in the chamber. And then again you leave the patient. Then the patient comes to you for the third appointment where you finish your obturation. So again this appointment, the third appointment is scheduled 5 to 7 days after your second appointment. So in the third appointment you remove the TF again, you irrigate and dry the canals well and then you start obturating the canals. After you obturate the canals you seal it with a proper temporary filling and then you recall the patient after one week. If the patient is completely asymptomatic, then you have to go for the final restoration and then you prepare the tooth and go for a stainless steel crown. So now let me just show you a video so that you understand the concept better. Here you can see that the pulp is inflamed and it is infected. So first we do the axis cavity preparation. We create an opening and then we disinfect the canals by using saline and proper irrigants and all that. And then with the help of small instruments like brooches, we remove the entire necrotic pulp. Okay, it is completely removed and then we shape and clean the canals, we progressively increase the file size and all and we complete the BMP or the biomechanical preparation and finally we fill these root canals so that the process of obturation is completed and then we place a TF on top of it or a temporary filling and then finally if everything is asymptomatic we create a permanent restoration for the tooth and if a crown is required we place a stainless steel crown. So hope the concept of pulpectomy was clear for you all. Thank you for watching.